Hey, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an HTML table on a page in your WordPress site. Now, HTML tables are pretty old school, but they're still useful if you don't have too much data in your table. And the reason for that is, or too much horizontal data, I should say, too many columns. Because too many columns does not translate well on mobile devices. On a desktop, it's fine. But if you're optimizing for mobile as well, which you should be doing, your table needs to be a lot narrower so it fits on mobile devices. And that said, tables are still useful and I'm gonna show you how to make one right now. I'm in the WordPress dashboard. I'm just gonna to go to pages and then click on add new. I'm gonna call this page HTML table. I'm gonna make sure I'm in the text tab so I can type HTML in here. And there are three, four important elements for tables. One is the table tag to actually start the table. One is the table row tag. Another is a table header tag, another is a table cell tag. And we're going to combine all those in the proper order and have our functioning table. So the first thing we want to do is open the table tag and then close the table tag. I always close the tags right away just to make sure I don't forget to close them because it can be a real pain to hunt for not unclosed tags later on, especially because the WordPress editor is not a real code editor and so it doesn't help identify the unclosed tags for you. So after we have our table starting and closing tag, we're gonna add table rows. I'm gonna have three rows in my table. I'm just gonna copy and paste these guys. So we have three rows and I'm gonna add TH for the table header cell in the top row. I'm gonna copy and paste these so I have three columns. And then all the other rows get a TD or TD cells. You can only have one row of table headers, which makes sense, because you usually only have one header per table. All the rest are table data. And I'm just gonna fill in some information really quick, just so I, we have some data to work with. Uh, country, color, and food. What are all my favorites? Well, Canada's where I am right now. I like the color blue. I like to eat pasta. Germany's where I was born. I also like the color green, and I do like myself some schnitzel. So there we go. We have some data in a table. I'm gonna click on publish and see what this looks like. It's gonna command or control click on this link right here to open a new tab. And here's our table. Doesn't look bad. Uh, the 2017 theme has some default styling that applies to all the tables. So that's what you see with these little lines, horizontal divider lines here. Your table may not look like this because you may, may not have that styling. Table headers, however, are always bolded and usually centered. So um, the 2017 theme is keeping them bolded, but it's overriding the centering for the table. If your table is just white with no dividing, no, no kind of CSS applied, it probably doesn't look that great. But what you can do to make it look a bit better is you can add a border. So if we have border equals, open and close quotes, the number one, Click on update. You will have a border appear around all the cells. And on mine, the, the dividers are still light gray because the CSS and the theme is overriding the, uh, the command I just put into the editor. And this is often something you run into with themes. You have to fight with their CSS to make things work the way you want them to because the theme has its own ideas based on its CSS that it has programmed into it. Uh, so I want to make these horizontal lines black as well. And we do that by adding a style. I'm going to add an inline style to the table rows and just call them border, uh, oops, border bottom one pixel solid black. If I could type today. And then I'm going to copy that to all the rows. If I save this and refresh this page, we see we have all the rows with uh, the black border, which is great. Uh, important thing to note, I'm doing all these styles inline. It's much better to do them right in the style sheet. So I recommend you do them right in the style sheet. I'm just doing them inline because it's it faster for me to go back and forth that way. I'm going to add a color to the background of my header row just to make it stand out a little bit better. And that I do 
by just adding it to this table row style and say background color. I happen to know this is a nice light gray. Update that page. Refresh this page. Now we have a nice background right there, which is pretty cool. Um, the 2017 theme is adding padding to the left of these two columns, but not the first one, which is odd and strange, but we have to fix that. So I'm gonna figure out what the problem is. Gonna right click on the first column, click on inspect, and we have padding left of zero defined in the theme, but we wanna have more than that. So I'm just gonna eyeball how many we need. I just put in one pixel right there. I'm gonna put or use the up and down arrows to try to eyeball how many I need. I think six is pretty close. So I'm gonna go back to the table cells that are in the first column and add a style padding equal or padding left is six pixels. And another benefit of using CSS is you don't have to copy and paste the same style over and over, which reduces your page size. You can just add another element to apply the style to. But in my case, I just keep copying and pasting it because that's what you do with inline styles. So I'm gonna refresh this page now and we should just stick with that padding, which we do, and that's fantastic. Now, what if, what if you wanted to have one column or one cell span two columns? What if color and food, you want that as one heading with two columns in each cell below it? You can do that and I'll show you how right now. When we go back to our table, I'm just gonna delete the food cell Actually, I'm gonna keep these uneven number of cells, only two for the header, and save the file, and I'm gonna show you what happens when you don't have the, the same number of cells in every row. So if you have a situation where you're missing a cell like this, it's likely because you don't have enough uh, cell entries for that row. And now I wanna make this, uh, this cell span two columns, and we do that by using the call span command. So inside that th tag, I'm gonna type in call span equals two. And I'm gonna add in color slash food. Now call span is short for column span. In this case, I'm telling it to span two columns. You can have it span 10, 20, 1,000, however many you want. Just make sure it's the correct number. Otherwise, if you're, if you're call spanning more columns than your table actually has, it's gonna look weird again. So you always wanna make sure that all the rows are the same width based on how much cell data you have incorporated. And I'm gonna click on update to update that page. And then refresh it out here. And now we have our cell spanning two columns, which is what we want. But it would be great if this was centered. So I'm just gonna add a centering command just like this around color and food. Go back to the page, refresh the page, and now it's centered, and that's fantastic. But what if you wanna have, you, know, you want one table cell to span two rows? What if for the country you want Canada to be, to be both of these entries, and you don't want Germany on here? Well, let's see how we do that. First, we delete Germany. Let's see what that looks like when you have an uneven number of table cells in an earlier cell. And what happens is all the cells shift. So in this case, under country, green doesn't make any sense. But we deleted the country, so it shifts them all to the left. And that's another reason you wanna make sure you have the right number of, of cells in each row, because your table may not make sense if you don't. So what I'm gonna do now is tell this cell to span two rows. And we do that using the, if I can find it right here, we do that using the row span command. I type in row span equals two. And again, for this, you can have as many as you want, two, three, four, five, 10,000, whatever you want. Just make sure it's the appropriate number for your table. If we go back and refresh this page, we see we now have Canada spanning two rows, which is awesome. Green, however, padding is gone. So we gotta go back. There's a lot of back and forth when you're doing stuff like this. I want the same padding amount, the six pixels 
on that green cell and then update that page, refresh this page. And now we have green showing the right amount and that's great. Uh, what we also might want to do is change the width of this table. So what if you wanted to have the width be 500 pixels or 300 pixels or whatever you, whatever you want or 10% or of the available width on the page. You can do all that. And what I like to do, I mean, if you, if you go back here and you start typing in width equals this number, then you save it, you refresh it, you go back and forth to get the right one. Or you can go use inspector and then you can just update it live and then see what the exact right number is and it saves you a lot of time. So if we click on the table, um, table element, we see right here that the theme itself applies a width of 100%. And so it's taking 100% of the available width for, for the content. And I want it to be less than that. So I want it to be width equals 70%. That looks pretty good. Oh, well, maybe I want it to be a little less. You're gonna use my arrow keys. If you hold down the shift key plus the arrow key, you adjust whatever the, the amount is by 10 percent or 10 elements, 10 units. If you just use the arrow keys without the shift, it's just one at a time. I'm gonna go with 60%. So I'm gonna go back to my table. In this case, I'm gonna use style equals width of 60%. Update. Now, usually uh, inline styles overwrite the CSS style sheet. So if I refresh this page, this should stay this width and it does. There we go. If you find that inline styles are not overwriting, but you wanna keep your inline styles, or if you have, if you're trying to apply styles through your CSS style sheet and it's not applying the way you want it to, something you can do, which you shouldn't do often, but what you can do is add in exclamation mark than the word important. And then that means, or that's telling the parser that this rule is the most important one for that element. So make sure you apply this one. And the reason you shouldn't do that is you have a, you have a style command somewhere else that's doing something you don't want it to. Then you have another command that's overwriting the first one. So you're taking up space and you, you, you're confusing yourself eventually, if you do this enough, you start getting confused as to what is actually being applied where and why and which is important and which one isn't. So it's best to always find the root CSS and change it there instead of using the important command. But use sparingly, important is a very powerful CSS command. And there we have our table. That's pretty much all you'd want to do with a table. And like I said earlier, you don't really want to put CSS into or in line in a table. So you'd wanna move that to your style sheet, but that'd be the topic of a different video. In this case, we just wanted to build an HTML table and there we have an HTML table. So I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video, share on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out wplearnlab.com for more tutorials just like this every single day. Talk to you soon.